In light of the uh, announcement that a number of masajid across the country will be opening, uh, firstly, what if an individual does not feel comfortable because of that individual circumstances or because of the inadequacy of the situation and the conditions, are they still obliged to go pray in the masjid? And secondly, what is the ruling on the congregational prayers with social distancing given that the rows do not seem connected? So that will be our first overall question. وما أرسلنا من قبلك إلا رجالا نوحي إليهم فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون so realize, uh, dear brothers and sisters, that the praying of the five prayers, the Fad prayers in the Masajid, uh, the default position within the four schools of Islamic law is that it is strongly encouraged and that communities should make sure that there's something going on, but it is not obligatory on individuals. Now there is a position that says that it is oblig uh, obligatory on individuals if they live close to the Masjid, and that position is a good one, it's there, but the default and the majority is that the individual salat, the daily salawat can be prayed anywhere. And so it is not an individual obligation, fard ain, for the person to go to the uh, masjid. And that is the uh, vast majority of scholars uh, from our Islamic history. The real issue is not the individual salawat, the real issue is the Jumu'ah salat, the, the Friday prayer. Because as we are all aware, the Friday prayer, it is uh, the default position is that it is uh, obligatory upon adult Muslim uh, males if uh, they are able to come and pray. Now that the communities are opening or some communities are opening, the question arises that should individuals who are worried about their individual circumstances uh, come and pray? And the response is that really this is a two-part question or a two-party uh, two question, not two-part. And that is that every single person needs to look at first and foremost himself or herself, and then the community that they are a part of and the precautions that are being taken and the area and the locality that they're living in. This is not a specific answer that I can give to all of the Muslims across America, much less across the globe. Rather, it is case by case, individuals need to assess both their own situation and the situation of the land and the ambience of the masjid uh, that they are w wishing to pray in. And take into account all of these factors, and then based upon that, take a judicious position. Let me state that the default is that if number one, their health is overall, uh, you know, they're healthy, there's no symptoms and they're of the age group, because again, the age does play a role here. All governmental agencies, the World Health Organization is saying that those uh, that are above the age of 65 uh, or even, um, you know, 60, some are saying they represent a much higher risk. And so obviously if you're in that age group above 65 or you have other uh, conditions, underlying conditions, and you need to take uh, precautions in this case, then inshallah ta'ala, no matter what the situation is outside of the house, if you yourself are socially distancing yourself and isolating yourself for medical reasons as it is, then inshallah ta'ala, you are not obliged to go for Jumu'ah. If you have an underlying condition or you are very senior in your age and therefore the uh, problems are uh, compounded for your uh, particular demographics, then definitely Jumu'ah is not obligatory. However, if you are uh, of uh, re you know regular basically health and sound health and the community that you're living in and the land that you're living in, the alert level has gone down slightly, which is what is happening across the globe after our social distancing, and your masjid is taking reasonable precautions, then indeed the default would be that Jumu'ah does become uh, obligatory as it was before the, uh, before the coronavirus uh, lockdown did take place. And so if you do fit all of these conditions, then the general ruling is that you should go. Now, if any of these conditions is not met, you individually are not of a healthy demographic graphics, or your land, your city is still in the uh, high risk zone, or your masjid is not taking reasonable precautions and there's only one masjid in the city and that masjid is really not understanding what is going on and you uh, are aware that uh, the situation is not uh, you know, uh, reasonable at this time to do what the masjid is doing. You do have in this case a legitimate excuse, but remember you have to answer to Allah on the day of judgment. I cannot you know, specifically tell you, you have to think about your own situation and make an educated 
educated guess. All I'm telling you is giving you the overall tools that if you feel that there is a legitimate fear, because again, the Sharia does take into account legitimate fear. It does not take into account uh, that which is atypical, that which is not going to be realistic. What is called the preponderance of the uh, uh, of the circumstance. If you think that there is a reasonable doubt that you might possibly fall uh, sick or the, the, the environment is not uh, you know, conducive for that, then inshallah ta'ala you have uh, the Islamic permissibility to not attend uh, Jum'ah and you will then pray dhuhr in your house. However, generally speaking, and we here in the state of Texas, as you know, in Dallas in particular, our own Masjid East Plano will be opening up inshallah ta'ala this week and we will be taking reasonable precautions, social distancing, shortening the Jum'ah prayer timings. There's not, no, no uh, intermingling of the Musalleen, everybody will be praying six feet apart, and so many other uh, protocols that we're taking into account. People will bring their own individual prayer rugs, they're gonna be wearing masks. So with all of these precautions in place, and if you are of a healthy demographics in this vicinity, my position would be that it is obligatory for you to now come back for Jumu'ah, now that the situation has indeed uh, changed. And with regards to the other part of the question, which is uh, the rows being separated, uh, realize that leaving gaps in the prayer rows, it is definitely something that is not encouraged. The sunnah, as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would, when he would stand up to pray, he would first thing he would do was to straighten the rows and to try to minimize the gaps between the uh, musalleen, between those that are praying. And uh, this is something that is explicitly narrated in many, many traditions. In fact, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would literally walk between the rows, making sure there were no lines on the ground, making sure that they were straight and making sure that uh, there was minimal gap. And he would tell the people as well that uh, come closer together, taqarabu, come closer together, tasafu, uh, and don't leave you know open too much, too much open spots. So that is definitely the sunnah. However, none of the four madhab said that it is obligatory. It is sunnah, it is encouraged. And if for a particular reason, if a person in regular season, not in the coronavirus lockdown, if a person were to pray a little bit separate from the, the prayer, the uh, the default position uh, uh, in the majority of the schools of law would be that his prayer is valid and it is correct. And this is when there's no excuse. Shaykh Hussain ibn Taymiyyah, uh, he was asked about uh, a lady who uh, came to the jama'ah and she did not find any other lady, so she stood all by herself and she made a line all by herself and she prayed in that regard. And he replied, and I'm paraphrasing here, that it is known that an obligation can be dropped at times of need. So how much more so when having continuous rows is not even an obligation, of course it can be uh, dropped. And he says that, وَمِنَ الْأُصُولِ الْكُلِّيَّةِ أَنَّ الْمَعْجُوزَ عَنْهُ فِي الشَّرْعِ سَاقِطُ الْوُجُوبِ وَأَنَّ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِلَيْهِ بِلَا مَعْصِيَةٍ غَيْرُ مَحْظُورٍ فَلَمْ يُجِبِ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مَا يَعْجِزُ عَنْهُ الْعَبْدِ That basically that whatever a person is not capable of doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not call him to task and it will fall for him if it is obligatory. So he said, how much more so? And he actually explicitly says that when it is not obligatory to have continuous rows. And this is Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, you can look at a volume 20 in uh, page 559 in his Majmu'ah Fatawa. This is Ibn Taymiyyah talking about regular situations and scenarios. How much more so when we actually have uh, this plague and this virus taking place? And that is why even in the Haramain, Mecca and Medina, and even across the Masajid in, in many Muslim countries, the fatwas have come from senior scholars across the world. In fact, there are too many to mention if you just, you know, look it up and you know what is going on. And uh, perhaps one of the most senior uh, one, Sheikh uh, Walid Dado, he gave an explicit fatwa in this regard that of course in this situation, such a salah is completely acceptable and it will constitute a jama'ah, even though there's a few feet between, it will constitute a jama'ah. Now somebody asked about, is there an issue of precedence? Can you quote me any of the classical uh, uh, scholars of Islam? And the response is, subhanAllah, no, I cannot quote you a classical scholar about coronavirus and standing six feet apart. And again, uh, dear brothers and sisters, from the beginning of this crisis, I've been hinting at this issue over and over again. And let me just lay it out for you very explicitly, even though I've done this quite explicitly before. What this uh, uh, situation 
is showing is also the different methodologies within uh, the scholarly class of Islam. And it is something that uh, it should be, I'm saying this with utmost respect to all of our ulama who have dedicated their lives to the Islamic sciences, but not all of our ulama are of the same mindset or the same paradigm or the same understanding of all the sciences of this world. And there's a group of scholars who really and truly don't uh, concern themselves with sciences outside of their their own branches and may Allah bless them and reward them. And there are others who understand that these types of issues need to be, the fatwa has to be in conjunction with and in cooperation with other specialists as well. These are areas where muftis and ulama cannot go unaided. They need the guidance of uh, specialists, of doctors, uh, of uh, those who study uh, epidemics. They need the, spe the, 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 the guidance that they are not trained uh, for in Islamic seminaries. And therefore, uh, what we know now of plagues and of epidemics and of viruses, it was not known even a hundred years ago. This is the first time we can actually see with electron microscope. This is the first time we actually understand, even when the Spanish influenza broke out, broke out 100 years ago, it's only been 100 years when the last major plague hit, the majority of mankind was clueless about what exactly is going on and what is a virus and what not. Now our knowledge of science and of medicine has gone not leaps and bounds, light years ahead. So this is the question. Are you going to listen to those ulama who understand that we need to take that knowledge into account and perhaps derive new fatawa in light of modern uh, knowledge? Or will you say all of that knowledge is irrelevant and I must find a precedent? And again, we went over this when we went over the issue of closing the masajid and other things. We did the right decision and I think inshallah ta'ala, let me see this explicitly. I think the majority of you now that were somewhat critical, you now understand that was the right decision at the time. Now, Alhamdulillah, we understand better. And Alhamdulillah, the curve has begun to flatten. So we can cautiously, cautiously, because the virus is still there, there is no cure. We can now, now that we understand the threat, because one of the things that happens in the last two months, the globe understood, you know, in this country alone, more than 120,000 people have died because of the coronavirus. I mean, that is uh, unprecedented in the span of just a few weeks. We've had this massive, and, and of course, across the globe. So the seriousness of now this virus and plague is understood. And when this whole issue began two months ago, many Muslims did not understand the seriousness. Now that we do, and now that we understand this is gonna be with us for the foreseeable future, now I hope inshallah ta'ala, you will listen to those ulama who understand that we also need the input of our uh, medical experts and those who understand what is going on together, inshallah ta'ala, we can uh, think about uh, how to best proceed forward and therefore, I will not be able to find you precedent because our ulama from the previous generations did not understand the reality of plagues and the reality of contagion and the reality of viruses. It is something that is all new. And so Alhamdulillah, we have ulama that do understand this now and there are plenty of fatawa in this regard. <laughs> المشحول يا من أحال النار حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك كون